evaluation with radicals and simplifying radicals. In this case, we're given an expression, the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and we're given that a equals a negative 3, b equals 4, and c equals 3. We're taking these values and substituting it into the expression, and then we're going to evaluate. So when I plug everything in, this is what I get, and now I need to evaluate. A key note here is we cannot take the square root until we have this evaluation to one number. So inside, I want to perform the operations so that it becomes one number, but the radical will stay until I get to one number. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to square that 4, and it, it's going to be 16. And then I have a negative 4 times a negative 3 is 12 positive 12 times 3 is a positive 36, so I end up with plus 36. Now I'm going to do the addition under the radical, and I'm going to get 52. 16 plus 36 is 52. And everything is still under the radical. Now that I have it to be one number, I can simplify the radical. And remember, when you simplify the radical, you want to break it into the perfect square factor, the highest perfect square factor, and your leftover. So when I simplify this, I'm looking for the highest perfect square factor, and I'm looking for the factor that's going to stay under the radical. So for 52, my highest perfect square factor is 4, and the leftover is 13. 4 times 13 equals 52. I can simplify my perfect square piece, which is that 4, and it becomes 2 root 13. So this is evaluation with simplifying radicals. Pause and try. So again, you substitute everything in. You square that negative 4, and you're squaring a negative, so it's going to become a positive. So you end up getting 16 plus 24. And I add the two numbers together. I get the square root of 40, and then I simplify the radical. Again, I'm looking for my highest perfect square factor and my leftover. My perfect square factor is 4. My leftover would be 10. This will simplify to 2 root 10. So now we're going to be working with the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula is used to solve quadratic equations. And one key note is you have to have your quadratic equation in standard form, where you have the x squared plus the bx plus the c equal to 0. So it's very important that you have it in standard form before you use the quadratic formula. And what we're going to be doing is solving for x. And the formula here is a negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. So this is the formula. Now I highlighted the a, b, and c in the quadratic equation. And notice that I also highlighted it in the formula. So what you're going to first do is identify the coefficient of x squared. That will be your a value. Identify the coefficient of your b, of your x value, which is your b, and your constant would be your c value. So you pull out that information, and then you substitute it into the formula and evaluate. So we're going to do an example. So the first thing I'm checking here is, is my quadratic equation in standard form. And it is because it's from x squared to the constant, and it equals 0. The next thing I want to identify are the coefficients of the variables and the constant. That will label my a, b, and c. So again, the a value is 3. It's the coefficient of x squared. My b value in this case is a negative 5. So it's a negative 5 because we have minus 5x, so the coefficient of x is a negative 5. And then lastly, my c value here will be that negative 2 or minus 2. So now that I have the a, b, and c, I can substitute it into the formula, 
and I can evaluate. So I plug in everything into the formula. Now be careful here because in negative B, when I put in that negative 5, we have that double negative. So it's very important that you plug it in. And notice that I use parentheses to plug everything in. So when I evaluate here, that negative negative will change to a positive. So I end up having a positive 5 plus or minus and then a negative 5 squared is going to be a positive 25. And then I do a negative 4 times 3 is 12, or a negative 12. Negative 12 times negative 2 will give me that plus 24, or positive 24. And then 2 times 3 is 6, so it's all over 6. I need to keep on simplifying until you can no longer simplify. So I see that under the radical, I can do that arithmetic. I have 25 plus 24 gives me 49. And I know that 49 is a perfect square, so I can simplify the radical here. So I end up getting 5 plus or minus 7 all over 6. Now you can't leave your answer like this. You actually have to simplify. So it's easier to simplify when you write it in two separate equations or problems. So I end up having 5 plus 7 over 6 and I have 5 minus 7 over 6. So I'm going to end up doing the arithmetic on top. So 5 plus 7 is 12 and I have 12 over 6 that divides to 2. And then the next piece, I have 5 minus 7, which will be a negative 2. And negative 2 over 6 will reduce to a negative 1 third. So my solutions for this quadratic equation would be x equals 2 and x equals a negative 1 third. So I want to show you another example here. First thing I need to do is get this quadratic into standard form. And that means it has to equal 0. So I have to move that 3 over. And because it's positive, I need to move it over by subtracting. So I'm subtracting 3 from both ends. And I end up getting it equal to 0. Now it's in standard form. So I can identify my a, my b, and my c. So my a here is 2, my b is that negative 4, and my c is that negative 3. So now I'm going to substitute it into the quadratic formula. And again, the quadratic formula is a negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So I plug all the information in, and I'm going to evaluate. I see that double negative again with that negative, negative 4. It's going to change to a positive 4, plus or minus the square root. And then negative 4 squared is a positive 16. And I get a negative 4 times 2 is a negative 8, times a negative 3 is going to be a positive 24. All over 2 times 2, which is 4. So again, I want to work with that radical to get that to be one number. So I do the arithmetic here, and I get the square root of 40. Now, at this part, I need to simplify that radical. If the radical can simplify, you need to simplify it. Now, in this case, 40 is not a perfect square, but it can be simplified. So again, you're going to break that square root out into the perfect square factor and your leftover. So my perfect square factor is 4 and my leftover is 10. So that piece will simplify to 2 root 10. So you're going to need to simplify the radical when you're doing the quadratic formula. So now I'm left with 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 10 all over 4. So you're going to have to reduce if it can reduce. So the first thing I like to do is look at the top part and factor out the GCF. What is the greatest common factor for that 4 plus or minus 2 radical 10? Well, the GCF here would be 2. So I would factor that out of everything from the top. So when I factor it out, remember, you're going to need an open parentheses, and you're going to need to divide it out of each term. So I take 4, I divide 2 out, and I'm left with 2, plus or minus. And then when I do 2 square root of 10 divided by 2, I'm just left with the square root of 10. 
and it's all over 4. Now I can reduce. And what's going to reduce is that 2 and that 4, and it's going to reduce down to just 1 over 2, or simply 2 plus square root of 10 over 2, or 2 minus the square root of 2, or square root of 10 over 2. Pause and try. So again, I'm identifying my A, B, C. I plug it into the quadratic formula, and I evaluate. I have that double negative, so I end up with a positive 12, plus or minus 144 plus 36, all over 18. I want to get that radical to be one number, so I end up getting the square root of 180. Now you're going to have to simplify that radical. The perfect square factor in 180 is 36, and the leftover would be 5. So that's going to simplify to 12 plus or minus 6 root 5 all over 18. Now you have to reduce. The best way to reduce is to first factor out the GCF on the top. So the greatest common factor on the top is 6. Once I factor it out, then I can reduce. 6 goes into 18 three times. So my final solution will equal 2 plus root 5 over 3 and 2 minus root 5 over 3. Pause and try. So again, you want to get it in standard form, so I have to move that 8x over by subtracting it and that minus 1 by adding it. Now it's in standard form. 4x squared minus 8x plus 1 equals 0. I identify my a, my b, and my c, and I substitute it into the quadratic formula. Again, I got that double negative, so it's going to change to a plus, and I'm doing the square of a negative 8, which makes it six, positive 64, subtracted by 16. So I'm left with 8 plus or minus the square root of 48 over 8, and I'm going to have to simplify that radical. That radical is going to simplify to the square root of 16 times the square root of 3, which simplifies to 8 plus or minus 4 root 3 all over 8. And now I'm going to factor out the GCF and simplify. So my final answer here will be 2 plus the square root of 3 over 2, or 2 minus the square root of 3 over 2.